That's very good, very good. Thank you very much. And I would like to thank Nikolai for the invitation, first of all, to take part of such an interesting summer school, to be here with you guys, as well as John and David. It's great to see Katerina here too. And it was very, very interesting to listen to Priscilla and Giselle about Virginia's group their current research projects and it's great to share this Brazilian morning with you guys. Uh, as Priscilla said, uh, there are, it's a, it's the, there's a wide range of research projects going on in Brazil uh, within cultural historical approach. Uh, we'll go through a different line, so, but I think this, this gives a picture of also about this diversity and I think this is part of, of of why we are here, actually. So I'm sharing my screen now. So the topic, the title of, of our presentation, Jose Fernando Patinho Torres is with me here, and I'm very glad to, to be here with him, a friend and great colleague. I, I think we can, can hear you, <laughs> or someone, all right. The title of, of our joint session is Subjectivity, Mental Health and Education, the Practice in Focus. Uh, we will we'll go directed to, to practice, uh, as, as Nikolai suggested. And, but before that, I'd like to, to introduce some, some ideas or, or some, something about our research group. And the study and research group is entitled Subjectivity, Theory, Epistemology, and Methodology. This was uh, a research group founded by Fernando Gonzalez Rey and Albertina Mitranz Martinez. Uh, I'm the current coordinator of this group. And some of, of the research lines that are being currently developed are subjectivity in teaching and learning processes, the meaning of subjectivity in human development, and subject, subjective processes in human health. So we, as we, you see, uh, Jose Fernando and I will try to, to give some examples of current research projects that somehow they delve into these three, three research lines, basically through the articulation of education, mental health, and human development through a cultural historical approach. Um, Fernando Gonzalez Rey, as I said, is the, is the, the founder of, of this research group. This research group is based, actually, uh, it follows the academic legacy of, of Fernando. Uh, Fernando, for those who, who doesn't know him, is a Cuban psychologist, scholar, and educator. Uh, he lived in Brazil from 1995 until his passing in 2019. His legacy contributes to, to a new complex and influential theorization of subjectivity from a cultural historical perspective. So he has a, a vast academic legacy, 29 books, 10 co-edited and co-edited books, hundreds of chapters and scientific articles. So uh, we are not here today to discuss and to present in depth these ideas. I'll, I'll just um, present a picture of some key concepts and notions, and then we'll bring more specifically the research projects and how this come to inform and come to, to develop practice through a cultural historical approach. So uh, Gonzalez Ray ha had some antecedents in, in cultural historical psychology. He, he's Cuban, he's, he did his PhD in the laboratory of Bolshovich, who was a, stu a former student and colleague and partner of Vygotsky, as, as you know. And mainly Vygotsky, Bolshovich, Rubinstein, Shudnovsky, and Lomov were specifically influential to Gonzalez Ray's thinking and theorizations. And uh, differently uh, from, from the more historical and archeological, very important work that Priscilla and Giselle uh, presented before, uh, Fernando uh, 
somehow he delved into this, this legacy. He, he had, of course, his positioning, he, he, he criticizes um, the dominance of activity theory for several decades and the neglect of some topics developed by Vygotsky, such as sense, the, the concept of sense that Priscilla presented, and the concept of Perishivani, social situation of development. And, and so he valued a lot of the work of Bolshevich, who continued the, the research line uh, of Vygotsky on personality and, and how these concepts come to, to generate a different understanding of, of, of personality, uh, discussing the motivational sphere of human psychology. So uh, he, he managed to, to delve into this, this, this theoretical tradition, but also to develop it further. So he starts with, uh, before, before I say that, it's very important to acknowledge, of course, that other authors of cultural historical psychology explicitly addressed the topic of subjectivity and not Vygotsky, not Bolshevich, they, they dedicated themselves to different discussions and concepts. But among them are Abuhanova, Shudnovsky, and Lomov stand out. However, although, try, although bringing the concept of subjectivity, these authors did not conceptually define subjectivity, nor did they build a research program oriented to its study. So, uh, Fernando acknowledged the initial attempt by Vygotsky and Bolshevich to advance a representation of the human psyche as a generative rather than an assimilative system. Uh, a generative in the sense of its complexity and challenging the notions of reflection that was dominant and hegemonic in the, in the Soviet psychology somehow. So uh, with different concepts, Vygotsky and Bolshevich, of course, advanced a lot um, Pereshivani sense and the, the motivational sphere of personality, as I said, for example. But he started his, his writings and, and, and his academic trajectory focusing on personality uh, from Bolshevich's legacy, but gradually, he uh, developed his theory of subjectivity. And this book, Qualitative Epistemology and Subjectivity, is a key work uh, from 1997 that uh, presented this theory uh, as an articulated system of concepts uh, linked, articulated to epistemological, epistemological definitions and methodological definitions as well. And he said in a chapter, it was not easy at all to advance on subjectivity as such within a psychology dominated by a theoretical imagery, the Marxist character of which was defined by an objective representation of human psyche and which developed itself within a political context in which idealism was defined as a political enemy. I think Giselle was saying a lot about this. This psychology was centered on explaining human psyche as determined by something external and on replacing psyche by something different. So uh, we can see uh, Mark, the Marxist basis on Gonzalez Ray's work very clearly. For example, the need to examine any human process within the social network in which human life takes place uh, the emergence of the concept of social subject and its relationship with the concept of working class uh, in Marx's work is also very influential to Gonzalez Ray's thinking and theorization of subject, of the concept of subject, and also dialectics as a continuous process of change in contradictory relationships. However, uh, Gonzalez Ray was a critic. Uh, was, a, was, a, was very critical in relation to the so-called anti-individualist Marxist ideas, not because they criticized individualism, something that Gonzalez Ray also criticized, but because they led, usually led 
in psychology and other sciences to an over evaluation of materialism to the detriment of dialectics. So this was mainly a problem of Marxist uh, authors and Marxist followers more than Marx uh, himself. Uh, so theory of, of subjectivity, as I said, is deeply articulated with an epistemological definition and methodological one, which are very important for us today as we will, we will discuss and present some practical ideas. Uh, and so this is the uh, qualitative epistemology and constructive interpretative methodology. This is based on the idea uh, that theory, epistemology, and, method and methodology, they cannot be detached from each other. Although we, we see a lot of, of this detachment going on uh, in psychology and even in cultural historical psychology sometimes. Uh, something that was, uh, is important to, under to understand is that uh, subjectivity for Gonzalez Ray is not only a new concept within cultural historical approach, but as, as a, is, it is a theoretical system with epistemological and methodological implications. So uh, he developed a critique of the importation of refined theories and, and, and he valued a lot the construction of new theoretical models and systems. So departing from the genial contribution by Vygotsky, Bolshevich, Lomov, how can we move forward? This was one of the big questions of Fernando. How can we develop based on the epistemological advances, on the theoretical advances, on different articulations, how we can think of different topics, such as subjectivity, uh, in relation to different research projects and theorizations. So his definition of subjectivity, uh, a recent one, is subjectivity uh, is a new ontological domain and it specifies a new kind of process that is qualitatively different from all the processes involved in its genesis. As such, subjectivity is ontologically defined by the integration of emotions and symbolical processes, forming new qualitative units, subjective senses. Such subjective senses are snapshots of symbolic emotional flashes that unfold in a chaotic movement from which subjective configurations emerge as a self-regulative and self-generative organizations of subjective senses. Um, so I, I will move forward and I think the concept might become clearer as, as we explain our, our research projects. So qualitative epistemology and constructive in, in interpretative methodology, which are crucial both for research and practice, as I will say, there is a unity between research and practice. They cannot be detached from this theoretical perspective, but uh, it has some pillars, some epistemological pillars. Uh, so I brought three of them and uh, the main ones, knowledge productions is a constructive interpretative process. It is not an identification of the real, of reality. Uh, it's not something to discover. It, it is a constructive interpretative process, of course, that change our relationship with the world, change our relationships with other people and with ourselves. So it, it's not like only discursive production, but at, at the same time, there is no linearity between the the, the production of knowledge and reality itself. It is also a dialogical process. So uh, dialogue uh, is a key concept, theoretical, epistemological, and methodological one for this approach. And knowledge production is also oriented, this, this uh, epistemological position oriented to the legitimization of the singular as a legitimate instance of its production. Um, so as I said, th there is a unity between research and professional actions. Of course, when you start a research project, you might have different objectives than uh, if you start a professional actions. But the process of knowledge production, the use of method, 
the use of instrument, the constructive interpretative process, how it, how it leads to different conversational dynamics, how it leads to different relationships. They are part of the same process, actually. So I'm just bringing some, some websites. If you want to, to learn more, to read more articles, books, book chapters, and videos, uh, there is this website, uh, www.fernandogonzalesrey.com. You can, you can translate it into English, so you can, can navigate in, the, in the, the archive we have over there. And also albertinamithansmartinis.com, who is Fernando main, Fernando's main academic partner and academic life. And she dedicated herself to the study of subjectivity, learning process, creativity, and innovation. So it's very important for, for our research projects we will present as well. So some of the international network, this, this research and study group is linked and articulated with several other universities and research groups around the globe, uh, both in South America, Argentina, Chile, Colombia, Cuba, uh, Mexico, Puerto Rico, but also in different uh, continents, such as Spain, USA, Italy, and in the UK, and I brought some more, something more specific about Monash University, which is, as Nikolai said, a historical partner, not only as an institution, but uh, with people like Nikolai Verezov, like Marilyn Fleer, Megan Adams, who currently teach and are researchers, as you know, Monash University, they are part of the tra trajectory of, of our group. So I brought three Springer books, which explore more this theoretical, epistemological, and methodological elaboration and conceptualization. Um, they discuss different topics. They, 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 are, uh, they have different objectives, but all of them discuss uh, these concepts, discuss research projects, and discuss uh, Gonzalez Reyes' contribution to dif different fields and contexts. So I invite you also to get to know these books if you are interested. Um, <clears throat> regarding Monash University, Fernando was a visiting professor at Monash University in, in 2013. <clears throat> and since then, we, as groups, we co-organized different academic events, such as the PhD Day in Penin Peninsula Campus in 2014, the Australia-Brazil International Seminar, which discussed current developments in Vygotsky's work, the concepts of Perishivani, emotions, and subjectivity, which was held in University of Brasilia in 2014. That's why I was saying to Nikolai, this is more than six years, Nikolai. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. So, yeah. <laughs> and also the Iskar Perishivani Symposium, which we organized in 2015. Uh, we organized a special issue uh, entitled Perishivani and Subjectivity, within cultural historical approach to the Journal of International Research in Early Childhood Education. All these materials, they are available. And some pictures of these, these moments uh, in the Australia-Brazil International Symposium, uh, in joint participations in, in international symposium at the fourth, fifth, and sixth international congresses, so uh, it's, it's a, a whole trajectory of exchange of ideas and mutual uh, learning process, I, I could say. So from now, I will uh, start actually these specific topics after presenting you uh, a little bit of the history of this study and research group, some key notions and concepts which I will develop further uh, in my presentation and, and Jose Fernando will develop further in his presentation as well. I will focus on mental health care, professional actions and subjectivity, whereas Jose Fernando will develop the topic of university, education and subjectivity, considerations on practice. And I hope with this, these two presentations, uh, it becomes clearer for you a bit of how this uh, approach 
can inform and can be the basis of practical, uh, practical actions, which are deeply actually connected to research projects as well. So I will start, as Priscilla also presented uh, their group and started, I'll go in the same direction. Um, to talk about this, this, this topic, mental health care, professional actions and subjectivity, um, um, I should say that some of the reflections, the case study I will present here, they are actually much more developed in a book entitled Subjectivity and Critical Mental Health Lessons from Brazil, which was published by Routledge in 2019. So it's another material if you want to, to, to read more about what I will present. So a little bit of context. So to understand how this research project started, which, which is the context of this discussion. So the Brazilian psychiatric reform uh, was a social political movement that emerged in the 1970s, in which civic society participated broadly, criticizing the horror of the mental hospitals, the asylum to mental hospitals, People were kept uh, in these hospitals for decades, sometimes for their entire life. So the, the association between madness and, and mental disease or mental illness provoked an institutionalization of this process, which is not only a feature of Brazil, but also in different continents, as you might, as you might know. So Brazilian psychiatric reform is a social political movement that challenged it, uh, these, these, these practices and these institutionalizations, uh, it coincides with a period of redemocratization uh, in Brazil after 22 years under military dictatorship uh, from six, 1964 until 1986. Uh, Brazil was uh, under a, a military dictatorship, so this movement was a democratic movement that called for not only uh, mental health care in freedom, but also uh, the, the questioning of the kind of science and the kind of society that needed this kind of, of, of institution that marginalized and actually uh, violated so many people throughout the years. So this was a, this was a movement uh, a lot inspired by the Italian democratic psychiatry, and it's based on the notion of deinstitutionalization. Um, one, I would say, the main mental health service that comes out as an outcome of this process, they are the psychosocial care centers. They they were created in Brazil as a substitute substitute to, to a substitute mental health service uh, in relation to the mental hospitals. They are the main device, therefore, of the Brazilian psychiatric reform. They are community-based mental health services designed as an alternative to these traditional psychiatric hospitals. And their service includes working with potential resources of the community where they are established. So they are open services with open doors. There, is, there are not inmates who live there. So it's pretty much a work based with the articulation with families, with communities and so forth. However, despite of, of the, the public policy and despite of the several good consequences of, of the services and of this process, I studied and, and actually conceptualized this idea of the new institutionalization phenomenon, which is, uh, it is important, of course, to have a public policy based on the psychiatric reform. It's important to have community-based mental health services. It's important to change the law as we did in, in 2001. However, the institutionalization problem uh, still persevere somehow. It is still part of the daily routine when, for example, professional mental health staff, professionals of the mental health staff, they discuss uh, 
a singular case based on the concept of mental disease. When they're trying to control people's behavior, when they try to, to put medications at the center of these relationships that are constructed within these services. So in this sense, uh, people are still seen as objects a lot of times, it still seems that objects of technical intervention, not as subjects in dialogue uh, in relation to the, to the professional staff and to relation to society as a whole. So it's a more subtle phenomenon of institutionalization in comparison to the mental hospitals, but they, they are still very present in our daily routine. So uh, one, one claim, one theoretical claim, and this, this was part of my research trajectory, is that to understand these issues, to understand these subtle forms of violence, of, of objectification, uh, we, uh, the, the, these issues demand reflections on possible institutional strategies that may open up new possibilities of individual and social subjective developments. And also it demands uh, a theoretical uh, approach that are able to generate intelligibility to this quality of, of, of experience, the quality of relationships, rather than the external facade of it, rather than the explicit discourse of people. So this here comes with the, the subjectivity, and I think subjectivity as a theoretical system is very power, powerful in this sense. So I said a little bit of subjectivity in the first part of this presentation. Some central aspects of, of theory of subjectivity is, are the understanding of the psychological as configurations of subjective senses that express complexity due to its multidimensional, recursive, contradictory, unpredictable, and generative character. So subjectivity is not seen as uh, the consequence of activity, the consequence of social structure, of social class. Subjectivity is a production, a symbolic emotional production, which are both individual and social. And it represents the way we live, the quality of our experience through living these social uh, spheres of, of, of our daily life. So there is also a permanent articulation in this sense between the individual and the social. Subjectivity is simultaneously social and individual, which are very different from the idea of subjectivism, uh, which is very much linked to the metaphysic discu the discussion of, of consciousness, the Cartesian consciousness, and so forth. So it is also a theory that is beyond the discipline of psychology. So it's subjectivity as a phenomenon is a transversal axis of human process in cultural settings. So a little bit more about the qualitative epistemology and constructive interpretative methodology and how, what are the implications of it to practice? As I said, the principles that guide research and practice are pretty much the same principles. And, and, and some, some of the characteristics of this approach. There is an inseparability between the empirical and the theoretical. And the empirical is seen and is understood as a theoretical enterprise, as a theoretical production. There is no such a thing as uh, the data collection and data analysis, as if there were different uh, moments and different parts of a, of a process. Uh, where, when you are delved into the, 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 the research setting, the research field, or the practice, or the, or the institution where you are, you are carrying, carrying out a practice, a specific practice, you are all the time reflecting, generating ideas, generating interpretations that will be part of the strategies you use as a professional or as a researcher with the participants with the, the mental health service users, for example. So the kind of instrument we generate is deeply connected to the theoretical productions throughout the process. So this is a, a very important issue, which is very linked to theory, epistemology, and methodology, methodology unity. 
So and that's why research and professional practices are also deeply linked. Um, instruments, both research and practice instruments, they are dialogical resources that foster the expression of the other within the research practice set setting. So they are not conclusive, con conclusive ways, but information resources. They are pretty much based on the, the, the professional or the researcher's crea creativity. You, you can invent, you can create instruments that are pertinent to the dialogical settings you generate and you construct within the professional setting you are, you are part of. So there is a, a recursive relation, as I say, between instruments and interpretative constructions. So these interpretative constructions, Gonzalez Ray called them indicators and hypotheses. Indicators are meanings that are generated throughout a practice, whereas it, it, it could be in the school, it could be in psychotherapy, in a community practice, but there are some, some meanings that the professional generates to explain uh, a specific issue that, that the professional is trying to, to understand. So, and hypotheses are broader meaning generated uh, by the articulation of different indicators. I will bring some examples to make it clear. So when we, we talk about a, a mental health field, so diagnostics and practices within mental health field they are based on subjective senses and subjective configurations. Subjective senses, they are, it's, it's actually, I'm not, I'm not discussing this today, but it's actually, actually a concept that is very much influenced by the, the, the concept of sense by Vygotsky in, in, in thought and word, a chapter that Priscilla presented earlier. Uh, but subjective sense for Gonzalez Ray is a, the, the, the most elementary unity of subjectivity as a system. It is the, this unity of symbolic emotional unit that uh, we are generating all the time. Every time we feel something, we are generating a lot of subjective senses. And the way these subjective senses, they organize in our experience, both as individuals and as, as social groups, they get subjectively configured. They have configurations which are relatively stable organizations or psychological formations of subjective senses. So when we try to understand a subjective configuration of a specific situation of suffering, for example, we need to go beyond the naturalized taxonomy of mental illness, which are basically based on behaviors and patterns of behaviors, patterns of normality. Uh, we need to go beyond the centralization of medication. Yeah? Medication may be an important procedure, may be an important technology to be used, but it's definitely not the main one when we, we are trying to address subjective processes. We need to go beyond symptomatic control, the idea that we need to control a mental health crisis, for example. We need to control it. We need to somehow be surveillant in relation to, to the crisis. So this is a, an idea that, that, that treats the other as an object of our theoretical attention. And actually, it doesn't help subjective development as, as I will discuss. So we need to go beyond explicit intentions and formal delineation of public policies as well. So when we discuss mental disorders uh, as subjective configurations, we are not talking about dysfunctional, uh, dysfunctional characteristics that are standardized in the, diagnose, the, 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 the diagnosis uh, books and so forth. We are, we are discussing, Gonzalez Ray defines, the emergence of a type of subjective configuration that prevents the individual from producing alternatives, alternative subjective senses that allow him or her new life options. So when we, we have a, a specific psychological formation, an organization of subjective senses that are related to suffering, to 
to not not a generation of alternatives. So that's when we we, we talk about a mental disorder. It's not a, a mental illness as traditionally discussed. So this is related to individuals and, and social histories and resources. We need to understand these histories. We need to understand people's resources in order to work with them, in order to, to generate and favor situations of development. So uh, I will bring a case study of Sebastian, which is very much developed in this book I, I, I talked about, Subjectivity and Critical Mental Health. Uh, Sebastian was 37 years old when we met. Uh, he was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia when he was 27 years old. He was known among professionals of a mental, health, mental health services as one of the first users of the mental health service with uninterrupted treatment for seven years. And something that characterized Sebastian's routine was an obvious lack of spaces and activities for socializing outside of his home and outside the mental health service. He used to say, my life is from the bedroom to the service, from the service to the bedroom. So this case was part of a research project which aimed at elaborating a theoretical model that supports educational practices oriented towards the subjective development of service users and the service professional team. Uh, I carried out a field work with him over 36 months, which is long period of, 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 of research, not long, but long with, with one single case. Uh, we had several group and individual conversational dynamics uh, during this, this process. And, and I, I'm not bringing a lot of details, but I'd just like to highlight some central topics of the initial conversations we had. So he used to say about his rich life his history in childhood, in the interior of Brazil, the relationship with his family, a lot of details about his mother, uh, his siblings, uh, his, his life in a farm when he was a child, uh, how the work was a central pillar of his life and of the life of the family. And, and also when he moved from the interior of Bahia, which he, he used to live in a farm with his family, to the capital of Brazil, to Brasilia, he highlighted a lot the violence in the region, region where, where he used to live. It was a peripheral region of, of Brasilia. But at some point of his life, uh, which is a very rich life, full of, of meetings, full of activities, of dreams, of plays and, and, and everything that a, a rich life of an individual is. Uh, at some point of his life, the production of his subjective senses in the face of the violence he experienced in his neighborhood, uh, his mother's death, which was very important to him, the loss of his job, the collapse of his social relationships and alcoholism, they were deeply articulated. So he generated subjective senses in relation to this process. But at some point of his life, all these subjective senses start to, to get configured in, a, in such a way that he said the following, the following sentences to me. At that point, I began to despair. I was already unemployed because the job as a painter I was doing was over and I didn't have the strength to look for another one. I was drinking so much alcohol um, that I wouldn't sleep for days. I was feeling myself very poorly. I started to argue with people who wanted to give me good advice. I didn't take care of myself. I gave up on life. Nothing else mattered to me. I carried, out, I carried on like this until I had my first serious crisis when I went to a mental hospital in 2002. Uh, an initial hypothesis about the subjective configuration of Sebastian's mental disorder is the following. That various life processes began to be articulated by different subjective senses in the new subjective configuration that gradually became dominant in Sebastian's life. 
constituting his mental disorder. He also found himself without resources to generate alternatives to that situation because of the fragile life options that he assumed throughout the process. In turn, such a subjective configuration of his mental disorder became a source of subjective senses associated with insecurity, low self-esteem, and feelings of incapacity. Gradually, Sebastian lost the condition of agent and his life by feeling trapped in a vicious circle from which he could not find a way out, which is very important here. And I would like to highlight that for you, that theoretical assumptions and theoretical concepts, they have consequences to practice. Of course they have. Uh, when we, I'm trying to understand Sebastian's subjective configuration in relation to his suffering at that moment, these reflections led me far away from the symptoms of his so-called schizophrenia. But for example, he used to, to, to hear voices that people don't hear. He used to see some visions, uh, hallucinations in the psychiatric terminology that other people wouldn't see. But this was not the main issue for him. This was something that followed him since, since he was a child. His main conflicts were life conflicts, were relationship conflicts. There were uh, his feelings of incapacity to deal with, with these, these situations. So these uh, theoretical reflections led me and leads us from the symptom, the symptom of mental illness to the subjective configuration of the experience. So there is an emphasis on the organization and the process of subjectivity. So this, uh, this is a, a very brief example of how this theoretical model, this understanding may support dialogic strategies aimed at subjective development. So I'll bring some, some reflections about individual subjectivity and social subjectivity and how they can be illustrated by this research case. For Gonzalez Ray, individual subjectivity is, refers to the processes and forms of subjective organization of the individual, which incorporate, contradict, and, or confront the social spaces of subjectivation. Whereas social subjectivity is the complex network of subjective social configurations within which all social functioning takes place. There is a social subjectivity of a, a couple, of a family, of a school, of a mental health service, of a community, in different layers uh, of social subjectivities. And we as individuals, we develop ourselves as individuals, um, of course, in tension sometimes with these social subjectivities, but at the same time, transforming them when we emerge as, as subjects of our experiences. So each level as individual and social subjectivities, they are intrinsically organized into the other in the specificity of its singular production of subjective senses. And I will bring an example of that now. So during a conversation uh, with Sebastian, he said to me, since I've started having these problems that I have of schizophrenia, I realized I needed treatment. So I stopped everything I was doing to focus on my treatment, to get well soon. I think that's the way, isn't it? Firstly, one has to be well to achieve good health conditions. Only afterwards can one go out to do other things such as work and leisure. The things that bothers me most of all is when someone who does not know me, looks at me and says, you're fine, you don't have anything. How can they say that? I don't have this mental illness because I want it. No one knows how I am, just the psychiatrist. So it is interesting to, to construct some indicators, some interpretations. The centrality of the psychiatrist in relation to his own knowledge about himself. The category of mental illness seems reified as an object of technical knowledge of the other. So he can do very little about it, just the other, just the psychiatrist. 
and he does not acknowledge the relevance of his own knowledge and actions in the course of his development. So, of course, all, all these, these, these ideas, these models, they are part of a social subjectivity which, which dominates the mental health services which he is part of and dominates also society in the way society, in a general sense, Brazilian society uh, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about. Uh, that relates mental illness with incapacity, with someone who, who should be treated and who hasn't the capacity or the ability to develop and to do other things other than the treatment itself. So Sebastian's treatment as organized in his system of institutional relations unfolds in subjective senses that become hegemonic at that moment. So actually, instead of the treatment in the mental health services provides or favor his development, it was part of his conflict. It was part of his mental disorder. So in this process, treatment and subjective development become increasingly distant to the detriment of educational practices aimed at subjective development. Um, I'll bring some, some so, so this is how the interconnection between individual and social subjectivity. And I'll bring some examples in very short minutes. So I'll pass to Jose Fernando about the, the concept of agent and subject and mainly the concept of subject within theory of subjectivity. So these concepts, they are not a historical static or based on a supposed original subjective condition. They are beyond rational control of the world and, and they represent the ability that we have as individual and social groups to generate alternatives within normative contexts. They are processes opposed to alienations. So the definition of subject uh, represents the individual or social group that opens a proper path of subjectivation, which overcomes the normative social space within which an individual's experiences happen, exerting creative options in the course of them, which may or may not be expressed in the actions. The principles that dominate institutions including mental health institutions, but I'm sure that educational institutions, in general, they are, in authoritarian societies, they are contrary to the emergence of subjects. They are contrary to creativity. They are contrary to singularity. And this is something we should, be, we should pay attention. Um, I think this is very important. And when we say about subjective development, what we are saying, uh, Mitrans Martinez and Gonzalez Reyes said that we consider subjective development as the development of new subjective resources that allow the individual qualitative changes in diverse areas of life and that generate an increasingly deep personal involvement in the, the area in which the subjective configuration of development is organized. So education in, the, in this broad, broad uh, view, in this broad perspective, is a system of actions addressed at the development of the persons and social groups. So the ground on which these actions take place, take place is the dialogical communications. So there are this link, this unity, uh, from this perspective, mental health practice, mental health attention linked to education, linked to subjective development. The practice based on this, uh, this theoretical approach is based on an ethics of the subject. We try to construct relationships with the other to use instruments that foster, that favors the condition of subjects, which, which is not determined by the professional, which is not determined by the researcher. Uh, being a subject within a specific context mean, means actually generating a, a, a process of subjectivation, a singular process of subjectivation that overcomes the institutionalization of a specific social context. So what returning to Sebastian's case to, 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 to bring to an end, uh, what, what did we do? 
based on all these interpretations, based on all these theoretical constructions. So I, as a research and professional, had dialogical, a dialogical process with the service staff, discussing his case, discussing how the treatment was actually doing harm to him, the way it was chronified, eh? based on medications, based on, on his obediency, and a lack of attention in, in his development. Treatment and development, they were detached from each other. So uh, we, we thought, let's uh, integrate Sebastian in a different social context from the ones that he is used to. So he was invited to take part of a football group. Um, the football group was, uh, took place in a community pitch where students participated and also mental health users, uh, service users participated as well. So this started the process of subjective senses, of new subjective senses related to joy, related to be connected with others without feeling himself inferior in relation to them. Uh, it started a process that he started to feel his body in a different way. So he started to walk around his house, around his neighborhood where he was very frightened about the violence and so forth. He moved to his home community and he returns to, he, he return, return to his home in this process. I was with him in some of these moments, fostering and provoking him also to, to go forward to actually uh, somehow generate alternatives to this crystallization that represented his mental disorder at that time. So there was an expansion of relationships with relatives and neighbors. So this was part of a different subjective configuration that started to be organized up to the point that he, who was one of the, the, the oldest uh, mental health service users, he asked for, for the discharge of the mental health uh, service. So this was a process, uh, a genesis of an alternative subjective configuration in contrast to the one that brought him to a paralysis in the face of different processes in his life. This exemplifies the emergency of the subject. Uh, I will not talk about this, but something uh, very interesting is that he started to challenge the psychiatrist. He started to get in dialogue with the psychiatrist. He was very frightened in relation to psychiatry because the psychiatrist knew everything. Uh, he was the, the, the a God, a sort of God, and he was just a patient. So he started in this process to negotiate his own medications, his own path, with the psychiatrist. And he said, uh, each one contributes with what one knows. It's true that, that he studied psychiatry, but I've lived psychiatry for many years. And I know a little of these things because I know about myself and my body. So from this chronic schizophrenia, he moved to the developing subject. And I think that this is something that we as psychologists or educators and uh, based on cultural historical approach, we can foster much more. We can foster more subjects rather than obedient stu students, rather than obedient patients. And I think this, this has to be followed by theorizations that enable us to understand beyond the apparency. So uh, I think this, this theoretical framework represents a proposal with heuristic value for advancing in theoretical, practical, and institutional strategies uh, that allow to consider singularity and uh, to theorize singularity and how it becomes the source of strategies. To overcome the fragmentation of the different fields of knowledge, for example, mental health, education, psychotherapy, as different, completely different areas, and to generate alternatives to the objectification and the bureaucratization of human relations. In a general sense, it favors the construction of dialogic space oriented towards subjective development 
and the emergence of subjects. So thank you very much. I will pass to, to Jose Fernando now, and then we open space for questions, comments. I'm eager to, to listen to you as well. Thank you, Daniel, for your presentation. So I would like to share now my screen. It's now appearing, it's okay. Yes. I'll try to. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. That was good. So good evening, everyone from Brazil. Uh, here it's on Wednesday. It's a pleasure to be here in this important meeting of learning and international collaboration. My name is Jose Fernando Pacino, and I am professor of the Faculty of Psychology at the Federal University of Tocantins in Brazil. I would like first of all to thank our dear friend and colleague, Nicolai, for this beautiful invitation. Thank you, Nicolai, and all the organizers of this session. I hope we can have many more sessions in the future. I also thank my dear friend and colleague, Danny Goulart, to share this space with me uh, for the excellent presentation he made about our research group and its important work. And Nicolai and friends, I think that Fernando will be very happy to see us here following the scientific collaboration started several years ago. I think that Fernando will be very happy to participate of this space. Uh, I also would like to congratulate our colleagues who preceded us, Priscilla and Giselle, for their excellent presentation. My presentation is titled University, Education and Subjectivity, uh, Considerations on Practice. I would like to show you some, some main production that we have been creating in the last two years about the topic of the university education. Here are some books, uh, mainly in Portuguese and in Spanish. And we uh, have to um, say that we have a bet né, uh, of the qualitative and epistemology subjectivity. That is that say that it's not only a methodological approach, but it's a scientific platform of the study of subjectivity. When we talk about subjectivity, we have to say that it's a system in motion. And for this system, we need an, in, an, an epistemological principles. Uh, we have three main principles. Uh, dialogue, that means that we are promoting emotional engagement. Uh, we promote provocation too uh, with the participants and reflexivity. We have the constructive and interpretative methodology. That means that the work field and the theory as are our unit. Uh, we believe and we uh, uh, have a bet for theoretical models. And we uh, believe that theory is a living system. And singularity, that is the, the third principle, means that uh, subjectivity and objectivity are not separated, but they are a unit. And we believe that historic and cultural subject, uh, subjectivity lived by people and groups are essential for our work. I would like to share you some concrete aspects of the Brazilian public university. Here in Brazil, we have 69 federal universities, 42 state universities, uh, 38 federal universities, we have, uh, for our policies, we have a free education, we have a scholarship, we have a financial aid for some students. Um, and we, as a country, we, we are facing some challenges from the Palette University. Uh, we are dealing with social, political injustice. That is something historical here in Brazil. Uh, we are dealing now uh, as, as the suffering in university process with the rising of suicide, 
uh, lack mot of motivation to study. Social asking is a very important challenge that we are dealing to. And we are dealing with the instrumentalist and non authorial learning that usually we, we observe uh, during the university process. And we have some contextual aspects of my university, the Federal University of Tocantins. We are a, a, a small university. We have seven campuses, 14,000 students. Um, it's very interesting, not only in this university, but in the country, we have a wide culture of sexual and political diversity. We have 82% of vulnerable uh, population and 76% of students are living far from parents' houses. This is a very, very interesting uh, condition of our public students in university. So uh, to face this challenge, we create a project uh, titled University Life Experience, the promotion of subjective development, where we integrate research, teaching, and practice as a unit. What are we creating now in the university? We create, firstly, uh, the psychology welcome problem that is, that is a social, academic, and effective and relational support for new students and teachers. Uh, that is a very successful program. Uh, we create the more life program uh, that is very interesting to promote the mental health in the university experience and we create the community social affective support in times of pandemic that is an effective support of the university to the university population uh, when i am saying university population i it means professors uh, workers and students and families to uh, from the university carry out through virtual uh, platforms how do we understand uh, the, uni the university experience? Well, firstly, it's an individual, for us, it's an individual, family, and social value, where social recognition participates that opens possibilities of subjective development towards different spheres of, of life, it where the learning, emotionality, pleasure, and sociability are a development unit. What is the university education from a subjective perspective? Well, first, uh, the university education is a subjective today, production for our comprehension. Knowledge in the university is more than a cognitive process. Uh, Fernando always likes to say that it's an emotional and intellectual adventure. And I think here we are having uh, an emotional and intellectual adventure in this collaboration this, in this session. Uh, motivation is, under, is understood as a fundamental process for the training process. In this sense, university education will be more interested in provoking curiosity, questioning and the naturalization, passion for some field of knowledge and ethical and political um, aspects. When we talk about uh, development, we are talking about subjective development. Uh, what means this concept that is a very important concept in this comprehension? We uh, believe that there are no universal stages. It happens singularly. Human intellectual capacities are inseparable from interests, projects, relationships of the person with others, commitments, family challenges, and mental health associated with spaces of socialization in which individuals integrate and are able to express new operation and subjective resources, where integration in a, into a, a social space is not just an adaptation or an assimilation. And as Daniel said, it's a generation on something new. And this socialization place take, uh, process takes place through tensions of new challenges and alternatives that individuals face in order to actively conquer their space in social life. Well, I would like to, to share with you a case that we had, a case that integrate the social and the individual subjectivity <laughs> that uh, Daniel explained very well uh, some minutes ago. In, in 2018, we had um, 
a dramatic take in a dramatic take in an accident. Tasio, that was a, a very nice student of our college, our faculty. Uh, he he died in a in an accident. It was very dramatic uh, because all the university participate of this uh, uh, suffering experience. He was a joyful, hardworking, and loved students by all the community. And we observed subjective unfolding in the class. Uh, difficulty, um, and when I'm talking about the class, I am talking about the group, the friends, the colleagues of Tassio. Uh, difficulty to continue with the studies, praying process, uh, suicidal ideations, uh, colleague uh, retreat requests. So uh, Laura, that is another student, a colleague of Tassio, he was saying, it doesn't make sense to live. If Tassio, who was, who was a handsome, strong, intelligent, and good, pass away, what can be expected of me as a woman with no special attributes? I am seriously thinking I should die. I need to free myself from so much suffering. And other people, other students was, was saying to you, for example, Alini was saying, I feel like I am going to die, that nothing is worth, is worth it. Carlos was saying, I am really scared. My family is far away and I feel forced away. And Lucia was saying, everyone around me is dying. We should get out here. So we are seeing in this movement that uh, there are um, individual and social process of subjectivity occurring in, uh, in a process uh, integrated. So what, what we create to face this important challenge that we, are, we were having? Um, we create we, uh, a social scenario to, to have uh, some action uh, to face this, this difficult difficulties of the, the people. And we integrate practice, teaching, and research. I was the professor of the class. The, the class was a psychology research. Um, hopefully, uh, I, I was lucky because I was a teacher of this class. And uh, the topic was uh, psychology research. That permits uh, me to, to have some action, as I will, be, I will explain now for you. Uh, we, we three or four classes for group dialogues because uh, the, the students wasn't learning, wasn't studying. They didn't want to leave because when, when some colleague at this age, uh, our students usually are between 17 and 20, 23 years old. Um, so we, we have to create actions to face this situation because we were uh, afraid to have uh, any um, suicidal situation, um, maybe a collective suicidal, why not? So we promote reflective writings. We promote many visitations to Tassio's family's home. Uh, we create songs, poetry, um, photo albums. Uh, we, 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 con we construct an effective memories. So uh, there's a very interesting feature here in Brazil, and is that most of the people used to play an instrument. Uh, the people hear songs, uh, uh, create music, create cultural resources. So we have a very richness here, a very cultural richness here in our country. And we were approaching, of course, these possibilities to promote development. And in all this group, we had a case that is the Laura, Laura's case. Laura was uh, a very important student of the class, as she was really, really, she was suffering for this situation. She was the best friend uh, of Tassio. She was living alone in a small city where the faculty is. That is the name of the city is Mirasema. Uh, she had had a brain tumor uh, two years ago, um, and she had a loss of 50% uh, of vision in an accident that she, that she had. So this situation, this situation of Tassius death, uh, promote many, many productions, subjective production in her 
that was a, that that, that um, wasn't permitting her to continue with the study, to continue with her life. She was diagnosed with panic syndrome uh, shortly after the loss of Tasio. She was medicated and hospitalized by the psychiatrist of the small town. She was made, uh, she was, uh, she remained hiding below the bed. So, so where, the place where she was um, less stressed were uh, the bed, but the, um, about the bed. She was not eating, she wasn't taking shower, uh, um, her house was in a chaos, and she lost contact with the faculty. When she lost contact, the, contact with the faculty, so we were really thinking that we have to, to do something. And uh, she couldn't learn, of course. She, 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 could be, she, had, she didn't have the capacity to uh, take uh, her study again. So when we uh, bet about the subjectivity as a system in motion, we are thinking that uh, what Laura is living is not a mistake. It's a process uh, of the subjectivity that we can uh, with, uh, uh, with, the, with the weekend, uh, in some ways, we can promote another alternatives of development. So, what we what we have to do, we break the walls. We broke the walls in, in this integration between practice, teaching, and research. We broke the walls, and we went to her house because we were we didn't know what's what's going on with her. And I, I have a research group of uh, very young uh, students, very nice and very motivated students. So we, in the first time, we promote basic care, food, cleaning, organization of the house, promotion dialogue. When uh, firstly, she, she, she couldn't speak with us because she was in a very difficult situation. And uh, support to create, um, a development process. We continue. It was the, in the first moment. In the second moment, we uh, so we, we uh, search uh, psychological and psychiatric support, and she had a gradual report to university, but of, uh, well, she was an in panic. So many students yeah, we are having always an, a socially strategic. Uh, community strategic that permit us to 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 give support to her. So when she was walking to the faculty, because she lived in a in a very close to the to the faculty, so always she had a a colleague that was walking uh, with her, talking about what she was feeling. Uh, we have um, when when she returned to the faculty, she had a an effective reception of her group and. Uh, academic has adjusted to her possibilities at this moment. So in some moment, Laura said, Professor, I know I am not doing well, but I need to present the advances I made in research in uh, I've made in research work. Tasi was my colleague in this journey. We were together in this production. I cannot leave this alone. I am going to publish the work taking Tasio as co-author because she was she she she, she had to, to write unless uh, uh, the class had to write an article uh, for the evaluation of, of the class. And I say it I think it's very novel and ethical of you to continue with the work you have studied with Tasio. Do you think you can study an advance in your work? And she said, I already talked to the psychiatrist and negotiated the doses of the medication with her. If I think I'm fine, I don't need it that much. I can reduce the dose. If I get worse, I will go back to among the, the she told me to take. I am really excited about it. So we are seeing here a movement of development, of subjective development, because imagine she's a patient of, or a psychiatrist and she's negotiating with the psychiatrist the dose of medication that she she needs to to, to continue the life. And Laura said, do you know why I became interested in people with disabilities? That is the topic of her research. It wasn't 
it wasn't their fault as because he claimed, but because of the subject. Gonzalez Ray says that a person can be a subject, overcome his problems and be full filing. Can you really believe it, professor? In this moment, uh, she, she continued her, develop, her subjective development. And in, there was a time she sent me a, a, a message uh, through the WhatsApp. And she was saying to me, uh, Professor, I am, I am on my occasion. She, saw, she sent me this picture of her. It is a, a, a river here in Brazil. Professor, I am on my occasion. I got a boyfriend. How about the picture? Not bad, for a, not bad for a person diagnosed with a panic disorder, right? So it's very interesting how we see the possibilities of Laura in her uh, subjective development. Uh, just to finish here, because we are, we are having some minutes now to discuss, Laura and Dick Lies, uh, in the end of the, uh, 2018, uh, the student union adopted the name of Tasio as uh, something symbolic. Laura started uh, a master's degree in education in the topic of disability. It was the last year during the pandemic. She started her uh, master. Uh, it started to create the first uh, scientific conference in psychology entitled Tasio Castro de Almeida, that is the name of the, our student that unhappily he passed away. Uh, release of a book as a tribute to Tasio with the student's papers, including Laura and Tasio's work. Participation in three scientific event, events in Curitiba, Sao Paulo, and San Luis. And uh, they created a mural in our faculty with the face of Tasio. And we are having this year the Tasio's degree. Uh, it will be a symbolic tribute. A family, the family Tasio, will receive uh, the, the title of, of psychologist. Um, as I, we would like to, to that, that he will finish uh, his career. So it, it's very important that we are having a key song action, showing some, some option, because in, if uh, our question is, if we don't do anything, maybe, maybe this situation could uh, have, have some negative uh, uh, unfoldings, uh, maybe suicidal situation. Um, and we think, so just, just for finishing, uh, the importance to promote the unity between practice, teaching and research in action that we are showing in this case. Promote the subject of the subjective development process. We think that the intellectual production is an unfolding of subjective process. And uh, we bet the relevance to think the link between health uh, mental health and education. So thank you very much for your presence. And now we are open for a dialogue. Thank you, Nikolai. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I, I'm, I'm just so impressed. Well, I'm, as you can imagine, I, uh, I had an opportunity to listen to Daniel and uh, Jose Fernando for, 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 for many years, uh, several times. And uh, I remember when Daniel and Jose, were, they, were, they were just PhD students of Fernando Gonzalez Reyes. They were young researchers, but now I see absolutely, completely, fully established professors having their own ideas, having their own practices, having their own publications. And it, it, it well, so to say, it brings a kind of, kind of honey to my heart that, that this, this my my colleagues are now doing uh, such a fantastic research and especially your practical practical aspects your cases you describe are absolutely fantastic and it, we can see that cultural historical theory never mind when you speak about theory of subjectivity or cultural historical theory or whatever so it has a such a strong huge potential for practice for transforming the practices from mental health social movements, political movements, education systems. And by the way, Vygotsky started from that because for, for him, the task was to change the system of education in the Soviet Union, to try to find new ways how to reestablish 
the uh, the process of creation of a new generation of, of, of people in the Soviet Union. It was from the very beginning practically oriented. And Vygotsky was not a theorist who was sitting in his office and writing books. No, he was a practical uh, clinical psychologist, defectologist, pedologist, working with children, children with disabilities, children with problems, uh, gifted children, families, uh, uh, social groups. And I'm so happy that Daniel and Jose and their, and their group, and now they are leading their own groups of researchers. They are now having their own PhD students. They are continuing this tradition of not just in, in encapsulating theoretical stance into the theoretical or uh, academic or, or, or academic uh, societies only, communities only. They are open to practice. So because research and, and, and practice are related. So we cannot do practice without research. We cannot do research without practice. And thank you very much. I'm, I'm really uh, impressed. And uh, my suggestion is uh, if you, Daniel and Jose, uh, Giselle and uh, Priscilla, if you can stay with us a little bit longer for half an hour, we have a wonder room and I uh, send the link to the chat now. Uh, if you can stay with us a little bit longer and to go to Wonder Room, and people will join you with their questions uh, uh, relate, related to your presentations, it would be absolutely fantastic. Because I also have a lot of questions, as always, and I will I will join you. Thank you, thank, thank you very very much. Perfect, well done. Um, can I also remind you that um, the bookings for the one-to-one -one consultations are still open and there's still some places there. So go on to that sheet within the uh, Google Docs. And um, thanks, Hongji, you've uh, put up the, the link to the uh, Wonder Room. So if you, can, if you want to go in there.